All right, BMX people, the pleasure. Uh, I'm Jason Richardson, as you know, or if you don't know, I'm Jason Richardson. And sitting with me, or across from me, or next to me, across the globe in Australia is Mr. Anthony Dean, 44. What's up, man? What's up, guys? How you doing with the Thank time God. off? It's good. Um, I think, you know, unexpected break, I guess you'd call it. Um, so it's uh, kind of just using it to, um, you know, refresh the batteries, really. And, yeah. Uh, hopefully keep it going for another couple of years now. <laughs> little extension, little extension. We don't have to get That's into it. too much talk about the future, but um, I know there were some riders that had some very specific plans about what was going to happen with their life after August of 2020. So some of those guys and um, gals have to have to push those off to another a whole another year or two. So we'll see. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it's um unexpected turn, but uh, I guess everyone uh, everyone's got to adjust. And like I said, I think it's a a good little break. Really, you don't really get many many breaks like this in your life to you know kind of have what it looks like to be a month or two months to just sit at home and do nothing. So it sucks, but at the same time, it's a yeah, can use it as a positive and have a big life break, I guess. Right. Well, I've been keeping up with your Instagram. Looks like you've been staying productive, training, having some fun too at the same time. Yeah, still going to keep active. Just uh, no specific training right now, but just keep it active and I guess uh, start getting back into it in the next couple of weeks. But for now, just uh, doing some house renovations and, you know, just cruising around. I get off a of home quarantine in two days. So maybe I'll go right. right around the streets, you know. Hey, I you notice I have a ring. So if I recall, all yeah. I, aren't some wedding plans or weren't some wedding plans yeah. happening? Yeah, so. we're gonna um, at the end of this year we're gonna look at doing something um, after the Olympics, and then um, obviously that's now going to be postponed. Um, so probably till end of next year. So, but yeah, oh, okay. correct. I do have a fiance, and yeah, we're all right, getting married soon. Cool, cool. Congrats on that. So as you know. Uh, when I hit you up by text, it was like, hey, man, if you could think of your best lap, and you've had a lot of good laps. So I know you had like a long list of um, a lot in the memory bank. So, I, and I don't care how far back you go, but, but or how recent, what do you think uh, your best lap was or has been so far? Yeah, like you said, your best lap. I've got a lot of best laps. Um, unfortunately, not many of them were in the final, um, but. It's all right. Uh, probably my best lap to date would probably be the uh, Shepparton World Cup um, in Australia at the start of the year on day two in the semifinal. Um, so that one was probably, yeah, probably one of my favorite laps. So take us through that day. Take us through that lap. Yeah, um, being my first home World Cup I've ever had. Um, so come a lot of pressure. Day one, I got second behind Neek. And um, mm -hmm. I really I really felt like that day I could have won. Um, you know, those those days don't come too often when you know you can legitimately yeah. win and, um so day two and i knew after day one i got second so it was um you know day two was the time to come out and uh, prove that i could win and right. really uh, doubled the pressure from day one um, i think day one there was a lot of pressure but at the same time it was no one knew how fast anyone was going and uh, mm -hmm. i think after performing well on day one it was like okay day two is time to time to step it up again and, and really, you know, handle the pressure as best you can. So the semifinal, um, I won all my heats and then, uh, yeah, come to the semifinal. Yeah, but I, so so those are it, – it's interesting how you say that because it's like you <laughs> – no one really knows how fast everyone else is going until you race. Then you have a day of racing and then you actually are like, oh, I'm – I, I think I, I know that feeling. It's like you run up for the semi or the main. You're like, part of you is like, I really think I could win. Like I, I could. Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. totally happening. So, so, but what what was it about that semi on day two? Uh, I think it was like the the quarterfinal I'd won, and um, you know the semifinal came in, and it was like, all right. Um, what lane did you have? Uh, I think I had four in the semi. Okay, so coming straight out the middle. Straight out the middle, and uh, I think the semifinals to me is probably one of the most pressure races um, out of anything because you know your quarterfinal is not as stacked, but your semi is is generally pretty full of the best guys. Um, mm -hmm. So it's very to me, it's very pressure in the semifinal, and, and if you can get through that, it either sets up a good final or and you know you got the inside or whatever you, you can choose. So um, 
yeah, that that semi final was just it was a full full rack and all the good guys and yeah, really just just crazy pressure and I just uh, you know executed everything perfectly and got the fastest lap of the day and got lane one for the final. Right, right, right. Was there anything particular, any place uh, in particular? I, did, I, I didn't actually get lane one, my bad. I got lane three. Okay, I, uh, but you were inside. Yeah. inside. But no, on that semi though, was there any was there any particular thing on the track? Um, like Because like, I remember when I used to race a long time ago, there were certain tracks where it was just like, maybe I, there was like the, the first jump I was connecting just right, or there was something about the, the way the hill was, or there's something about, just, there were certain places on certain tracks where it was just like, I knew I could just gobble it up. Like that was my time to shine. Was there anything in Shepparton that you felt like, I don't know, was just like calling your name? Yeah, I think like you said, like the first jump was very critical there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're watching that race from, from memory, is you, you jumped and you had to pause in the air and relax. Mm -hmm. You know, feeling like someone was going to pass you. But the second you landed and I knew if I could just get over it clean, I would take mm -hmm. off. Um, and that was my plan all day is as soon as I could just get over that jump clean, I knew no one could touch me to the first turn. And in that semi-final, I just happened to get it absolutely perfect. And then I took off. So it's like you get out of the gate, bah, 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 wait, and wait, and then go. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to push it there too, because like everyone's exactly. right there. And then you would see people, I remember calling the races, like, or the races, and it would, you'd see people like try to push too hard and they would, they would case it a little bit or, or over jump or whatever. So just being patient yeah. in that spot. How about the rest of the track? Because I mean, it seemed like there was, there was a lot of room to, to make mistakes like you could over jump something or underdo something it seemed like there was a lot of timing involved as far as the flow of that track was kind of like step on it step off it step on it step off of it yeah exactly like you said i think it was um you had to be very precise but i knew that if you didn't make a mistake no one could really pass you um so i think the biggest thing was is making no mistakes and, and staying on the insides knowing that you know it'd be two bike lengths for anyone to get around you so you know, if you could stay smooth and, and not make a mistake, you there was a high chance of you um, winning. So I think that lap for me was just getting out, getting out the first turn clean. And it was just, you know, sprint out the turn and then stand tall and just get through the straight and then sprint out of the turns. And, you know, it's probably wasn't the fastest lap, but it was enough to, to get the win. And um, I think that's, you know, basically going back to day one is, is watching what Nick did. He just, you know, was out in front and just, kept those insides, kept the straight smooth, didn't make one mistake. And, you know, I couldn't, there was no way I was going to pass him. Right. Right. So you said you got the fastest lap in that semi on day two? No, no, I didn't actually. That was day one. Day one, you got the fastest. All right. Got so it. Day two, I, I think I got, I think lane three. So it was third or fourth um, quickest lap. But uh, yeah, from, from recall, I think it was a little bit windy day two as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think from memory, but you know, either way is uh you know, getting getting from lane one to four in a final to me is is a win in itself because you know my lap times aren't really that quick, all that quick in the past. Right. So, what things? Um, what are we looking forward to now? What's the word in Australia, in general? BMX quarantine. In general. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I think Australia is in a pretty good position. I think there's five thousand cases. I mean, say pretty good compared to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. um, so the lockdown here is, is pretty similar to everywhere else, but it's not as crazy as, as a lot of other places. So, you know, as far as international events, I mean, I personally don't see anything happening until at least, you know, October, November, December, if right. something were to happen. Um, so I think we're in it for the long haul, and that's probably why I've, you know, given myself, you know, speaking, speaking with Sam and just kind of probably have a month off and, and slowly get back into it. And I think, yeah, I think we're looking at a big um, – end of 2020 a long 2021 or a really long or a really long 2020 <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. going to next year right exactly so i think yeah i think it's going to be a long once we do get going um it's going to be a long and a long season i think there's going to be a lot of races crammed together around the world um so i think it's gonna be a lot of travel a lot of everything and yeah so i'm really just you know taking this time to just refresh the batteries and do what I can, and then once we do get ready to go again, it's, I think it's going to be full steam ahead, and there's going to be every event every weekend, and right. we're going to be, you know, flat out until the Olympics come. And before we know it, I'll be there. 
Yeah. Are there uh, are there any any riding spots available to you right now, or are you just is it strictly you're just at home? Uh, right now, I've got like two more days because when you fly into Australia, I think anywhere now, but mainly mm. in Australia, it's, you fly in, you have to do 14 days at home no matter what. Oh, okay. You can't leave. You can't do nothing. So I think that's what they're doing to can, to to bring down the the spread rate, which is great because mm-hmm. um, most of the cases come from overseas. So um, once that's over, the tracks there is some public tracks here, and I think you know once my quarantine's over, I'm going to start getting back into it, um, riding the tracks and doing everything. So, um, but there is tracks around here that I can go and ride. Like I said, we're not on full lockdown, so there is things still available to go and do. So. Right. I'll probably head out to the track at the end of the week and start cruising around. Nice. So I have my answer, but yeah. I've had this conversation with other riders, other coaches, other BMX people. So there's no gym. Say there's no gym available to you. And for a lot of people, there isn't because their yep. gym was their gym. Yeah, you yeah. have zero weights. What do you think the best thing to do is to go fast? I mean, you can you can do gym work without weights. You know, you can do body weight, like a lot of body weight stuff. You can get creative, and um, you can, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Yeah, just body for sure. Um, you know, YouTube. I mean, everyone has YouTube. Like, they, everyone's going to watch it on here. So, I think that's your best friend. Is you can literally find any workout in the world on YouTube. You can type in home um, body weight gym workout for strength, and I'm sure there'll be a million ideas. There's a million ideas, but I didn't ask YouTube. I asked Anthony Dean. That's <laughs> it. I've got a gym. So. Your opinion. So, so you don't have a gym, right? Let's say you didn't have yeah. a gym, but you had no weight. What would be like, you know what? I'm one of the guys who always gets down the first straight. I'm, I'm good at being top three pretty much every time down the first straight, top two yeah. even. What's the one thing I could do? What's the one thing I want to do to maintain that pipiness down the first straight? That heat. Why, why staying at home? While staying at home. I would I would do a lot of single leg body weight stuff, you know, like a, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, I would do a lot of um, probably everything I would do would be single leg something. Um, so like maybe you know a single leg squat off a chair just to do one of them, um, like a pistol squat at school. Yeah. To do one of them is is ridiculously hard. So my goal would be to do you know ten of them, and then once I could do ten, I would I would try and do ten fast, you know, explosive up just to keep that pipiness. I think Dang. just that alone it will take weeks and months to, to get good at so, <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i could do one now right 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 no that's good that's good because I, I always i always went back to sprints i always went yeah. back to sprints but i i i think that's just an interesting question because i'm yeah. not going to refute you on yeah. what on what what would be the fastest yeah, yeah. thing or what would be the best thing to do but that's good yeah, that's good be, yeah something like that stability a lot of stability that yeah core in your back i think that's a huge part of, of definitely a first rate so i think things like a, a, a pistol squats are crazy hard so stuff like that would be great for you nice nice well hey man i do appreciate you taking your time to join us um this will be a bmx live tv production so you're a star on the on the ch- on the show yeah. <laughs> when you're racing but it's so crazy it's like no helmet no goggles like you it's yeah. i'm sure people are gonna be like you know a lot of people yeah, don't even know what I look like because I'm behind the scenes, and then you, it's like you normally have yeah. the stormtrooper kit on. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's pretty wild, yeah, pretty well. Looking forward, looking forward to seeing them all. Yeah, yeah, man. I appreciate you coming on. Is there anything, uh, anything else you want to say? Um, maybe just remember we're not locked inside; we're safe inside. Ah, I like that one. Like I that. like that. I like that. There that's a go. good. That's a good reframe. And we're safe inside. Gone. That's it. But you know. Hey, free your mind. Exactly. Free your mind, man. It doesn't matter where you are, right? Pick up, pick up a book. Pick up. Uh, it's all. What is it? All BS. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, we have to be careful with that. We have to be careful. With that. Yeah, I'm yeah. doing my other job. <laughs> pick up a book. Any book. That's um, it. Like I got one. Yeah. Test yeah, out. Yeah. Test out those that single leg body weight stuff at home. Exactly. Oh, unlimited power. Nice. Nice. Yeah. All right. So see, even the best get their read on. Scholars, business, business people, and top athletes That's all it. here. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for everything. All right. Stay safe. Guys. All right. Peace.